Electrophilic addition is the main reaction pathway for addition to a double bond. And by addition, we mean breaking the pi bond and forming two sigma bonds to something attached to each carbon. Electrophilic addition is a two-step process. The pi electrons are used to form a bond to some electrophile, which makes a carbocation. That carbon has a positive charge and needs a pair of electrons, so it reacts with the nucleophile. The first step is a slow step, which generates an unstable carbocation. And the second step is much faster. I should mention that the electrophile and nucleophile don't need to have charge. They often are charged, but it's not essential. It's also important to notice that there are two key questions about the product. Is the formation of this product regioselective? That is, does this electrophile add to one of the carbons preferentially compared to the other, as I've shown here? And the second question is, are there stereochemical selectivities involved? The alkene can have E and Z stereochemistry, and the product can have stereoisomers. As we look at specific reactions, we need to keep both of these factors in mind. And, talking about specific reactions, let's talk first about the addition of HX, whether it's HCl, HBr, or HI. All of the same considerations apply. When this alkene is treated with HBr, the product I've shown results. You see that the regiochemical preference, the position selectivity, puts the hydrogen on the carbon that already has a hydrogen. This is often observed for electrophilic addition when hydrogen adds and is summarized by Rakovnikov's rule. That general rule states that the hydrogen adds to the carbon that already has the greater number of hydrogens. In this case, one carbon has a hydrogen, the other has no hydrogens. And the addition shows high regioselectivity. When we think about the mechanism of electrophilic addition, this is easy to explain. HBr is a strong acid, so it's a strong proton donor. The proton acts as an electrophile. These sigma electrons stay with bromine. And here's the carbocation that's an intermediate in the two-step electrophilic addition process. Bromide is formed as a byproduct in this first step. In the second step, bromide that we just formed acts as a nucleophile, forms the sigma bond. So we see that the regiochemistry is the result of the proton adding to the carbon that already has the more hydrogens. Why does the proton add to that carbon? Well, it makes the more stable carbocation intermediate. This is a very important insight. The alternative position selectivity would result in this carbocation. Let's take a quick look at the energy diagram for electrophilic addition to see why the tertiary carbocation is favored. Here's the two-step energy diagram. There are two humps because there are two steps. And the first step is a slow step. The activation energy for that step is much greater. Keep in mind that the reaction we're talking about looks like this. And we're wondering if this tertiary carbocation is favored or formation of the secondary carbocation is favored. Well, secondary carbocations are less stable than tertiary carbocations. So the energy diagram of the first step for formation of the secondary carbocation looks like this. The carbocation intermediate is substantially less stable, so the transition state leading to it is less stable. That's Hammond's postulate which tells us that in an endothermic reaction, such as we're looking at here, the transition state will look a lot more like what we're forming, the carbocation, than the reactant. So things that stabilize the carbocation stabilize the transition state. And the transition state forming a secondary carbocation also is less stable than the transition state forming the tertiary carbocation. So we have this kind of a difference in the activation energies. The reaction barrier for forming a secondary carbocation is considerably higher, so the reaction rate is much slower. In fact, the rates are so different that this reaction is highly selective for formation of the tertiary carbocation. So now we go back to our reaction and understand Markovnikov's rule. The hydrogen adds to the carbon of the double bond that has the greater number of hydrogens because it makes the more stable carbocation intermediate. The secondary carbocation is not formed to any appreciable extent. And we now understand Markovnikov's rule could be said a little bit differently. 
The electrophile adds to the carbon that makes the more stable carbocation intermediate. The electrophile doesn't have to be a proton. Markovnikov initially observed this in terms of protons adding to double bonds, but the electrophile can be anything. Notice also that in the product I've shown, there is no stereochemical question. Neither of those carbons that were part of the double bond becomes a stereogenic center. So although we said we had to keep an eye out for stereoselectivity, it's not an issue in this reaction. Take a look at this one. This molecule is slightly different than the one we've been looking at. It has an ethyl group here instead of methyl, so now we have easy stereochemical isomers possible. And I've drawn the Z stereochemistry. Put the hydrogen in for emphasis. Now when we add HBr, two products result. They're formed in equal amounts, so this is a racemic mixture. Even though the starting alkene is a pure stereoisomer, we make two stereoisomers in the product. Why is that? Well, again, let's go back to the mechanism. The pi electrons form a bond with a proton to make a carbocation, which we've been writing like this. That's okay, but let me redraw this structure so we can take a closer look at the carbocation with an empty p orbital. Here's our carbon. It has an ethyl group attached and a methyl group attached. And I'm turning this on its side so we can see the p orbital. The other group attached to this carbon is a CH2, CH2, CH3 propyl group. Now the p orbital is in a plane defined by the screen. An empty lobe there and an empty lobe here with the positive charge. Now that nucleophile, the bromide, can add from either side. They're entirely equivalent, approaching from above, approaching from below. One makes one stereoisomer, one makes the other. These reactions, the addition of hydrogen halide and the addition of water, are neither stereospecific nor stereoselective. So there you have it. Addition of hydrogen halide is highly regioselective. These reactions follow Markovnikov's rule, but don't show stereospecificity or stereoselectivity.